Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am going away this weekend. Today is Friday the 15th. And I'm my birthday is on Sunday, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so I will be going to see family. Uh, so I won't be here. So this video is going to be tailored to go up on my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Uh, if you could be so kind as to type happy birthday in the comment section, it means a lot to me. Uh, I just want to start off by saying a lot of people, they know about my boxing past. They know about my, my boxing history. Uh, and the fact that I was a, a junior boxer, I had about 13, I think, no, 15. I had 15, uh, no, is either 13 or 15, um, small junior fights under my belt from the age of 13 or up to the age of seven, no, 17. Uh, I had a couple of junior fights under my belt, which isn't a lot comparison if you think about it, but the point was there were only three rounders, head guards, mouth guard, gloves, the works. Uh, I, I took boxing because I was bullied in school and I took it to help with my self-esteem issues it wasn't the fact I couldn't handle myself in a fight I could but I was afraid that I was going to end up hurting someone past stopping them if that makes sense see when I grew up police wouldn't get called if there was a, an aggro going on if there's two people having a, having a Barney uh, Barney rubble trouble um, then it is what it is. Unless someone's literally been knocked out and an ambulance has been called, then the coppers are going to get involved. Otherwise, if it's just a school, if it's just a playground that will scrap, no one ever, no one ever got pulled on it. Well, I got into a fight once at one of my secondary schools. It was so bad, I ended up putting the poor boy in hospital because I did not have any way to ch channel my rage. And what I mean by that was, um, it's, it's like a pseudo blackout. When someone is so angry that they black out and they don't remember what they did, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, I blacked out and this poor kid ended up in the hospital really, really bad. I mean, really, really bad. Um, he was in English equivalent of, 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 of intensive care for, for I think, like two weeks. He, it was touch on going whether or not he was even going to live. Um, I was looking at potential manslaughter charges. Um, Mostly because of what I did to the poor, poor kid. And it all started because my father had passed away. And um, he made a silly comment. Because uh, I, I, it was Father's Day just shortly afterwards. And I wrote in one of my books, I love you dad. Kind of thing. And he took my book and he tried to embarrass me in front of everyone in the classroom. And I weren't having that. And I literally flipped my shit, picked up my old wooden school desk. And I just threw it at the motherfucker like I was Incredible Hulk. Pardon my, pardon my curse words. And then I proceeded to pummel him and beat him with a metal rubbish bin, which is why after I think it was like 90, it happened in 1990, so 92, 93, most secondary schools got rid of those little metal rubbish bins by the sides of the teacher's desk and they replaced them with a little like a washing up basket. Um, and and um, that was because of people like me would just grab it and just dong, 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 dong. I, I destroyed this bucket on this kid's head. Um... And if it, I had, you know, knock on wood, if it wasn't for a very well-educated NHS ambulance driver, this that kid probably would have died. I had no way to channel or control my anger. I then went from that was at Hatcham Wood. That school's now closed down um, because of the violence and and whatnot. Um, I went to three or four secondary schools. I eventually went to another secondary school after a year of searching. It took my mum a year to find a secondary school that would take me. Because that incident followed me everywhere like a plague. And um, eventually uh, uh, I found a school that took me. And on my day of orientation, who walks past me, the kid that I beat. I My mum was with me. My mum immediately pins me to the wall. And she's like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Because she knew if, I, if, I'd, if I'd have clocked him. And I did see him. And my hands instantly went from this to this. I would have just lunged at him again. And um, found out that me and him were not only going to be in the same assembly hall area. But we would also, we'd had like six or seven classes out of the eight classes for every day for like three days a week. We would be in the same classroom. The school was completely oblivious of each other's uh, um, issues. And so eventually the school was like, we'll, we'll change you around. So they changed me around and purposely put me in classes that made no fucking sense to me. 
Well, all that aside, while that was going on, my PE teacher, Mr. Davis, love you, Mr. Davis, he saw that I had a lot of potential in me because my school also offered self-defense classes. So I was taking judo, I took taekwondo, and I took judo, taekwondo, and there was one other. Um, judo, taekwondo, Thai boxing. And I realized I had a more of a liking for the Thai boxing. And it, was, it went Thai boxing, Taekwondo, and then Judo last. And my sister, Joanne, she's... Don't fuck my sister. She's black belt in, in Judo. She will fuck you up. Um, and she's she dropped men twice her size. She went to the Olympics, for fuck's sake. She got bronze. My sister knows how to handle herself. She's no joke. She's fucking... She will kick the shit out of you. She knows what the fuck she's doing. She's like the English equivalent of Gina Carano. She knows what the fuck she's doing. And she's like four foot eleven. Don't fuck with her. Do not fuck with her. Gravity doesn't... The only one who can fuck with her is gravity. Okay, trust me. Do not fuck with her. Anyway, so... I started going down to... to there's a boxing gym on the old Kent Road called Cooper's Gym. And yes, it was Henry Cooper's Gym. I went in there... I used to go in there on the weekends, uh, Friday after school, Saturday mornings, and Sunday lunchtime. I would go in there, and I learned the fundamentals of jabbing, guarding, cross-guarding, uh, slipping jabs, hooks, uh, uh, hey mate. I, I, I learned everything that I needed to tailor myself, and I realized I was punching more doing the Thai boxing classes than I was kicking. And I realized I started to hate Taekwondo because there's not a lot of punching in Taekwondo. It's mostly kicks, uh, uh, kicks knees, and, and counter kicks. And I dropped Taekwondo. And at the, my Taekwondo classes, I asked Mr. Davis if I could go spend those those classes over at Cooper's gym. And he agreed. So as long as the trainer down there, you know, ripped down my attendance time uh, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And there was some there were some hoops to jump through. But we jumped through them all. Got them all sorted. And Mr. Davis went to my first three amateur classes. My first three amateur fights. And he asked me if I was ever interested in joining the British Army. And I was like, oh. And he's like, the the, 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 the the cadets is starting a new thing with the school. Would you be interested in joining the cadets? I was like, fuck it. Yeah, sure. Why not? So I started the cadets. That's how I got into the British Army as well. Started the cadets. And pre-signed up while I was in the cadets. So the day of my 18th birthday, I was sent to the Woodage Arsenal Army Base. Uh, 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 artillery base went there started there I started off on artillery I started off with infantry went through the artillery program realised I had more of an affinity for, for tanks than anything else so they sent me off to Boddington went to Boddington got my tank training got my certificates got everything else and then I got shipped off to to Afghanistan so that's pretty much how, how it happened now long story short the boxing side so because a lot of people that know me know me know about my boxing history they know about my 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 everything to do with boxing basically when i worked at paddy power i was known as the 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 the, the, the boxing guru because people would come in with their bets you know like um triple g versus so and so and i would laugh and say okay you just pissed your money away and they're like what and i'll take their bet hand them their slip and say and say triple g is going to beat this guy in the fifth round and it got to the point where it was they would show up with a blank betting slip and ask me who was going to win. And I would tell them, tell them the round. They would write it down on a slip, send it to me, best odds guaranteed, give it back to them, they pay me the money guaranteed. Next day, they come in after the fight. Because oh, yeah, yeah. I I, not only did I get the round, I even got the punch. I was that, I'm, I'm, I'm that good. So, please understand that I no longer work at Paddy Power because I couldn't do that job. It was crushing my soul. It was it was physically crushing my soul. Watching people come in who work their entire week, you know, spunk their entire paycheck, not paying rent, not paying bills, not buying food for themselves or their family or whatever, and blowing it all on virtual dogs or virtual horses or whatever. I felt fucking horrible about that. I did. I felt horrible about it. Well... Long story short, I quit working at Paddy Power, but I still keep tabs on the box. In fact, I, I, I go to local boxing 
shows. Undercards are one of the best things that I like to watch. The main fights are fun, but I'm, I'm more of a fan of the undercards because that teaches you who's up and coming. That teaches you who to pay attention to. You know, main, main fight is like Fury. Okay, yeah, we're a big fucking whoop. Okay, big dumb gypsy. Don't care. And that's all he is. I'm sorry, he's a big dumb gypsy that punched himself in the face. Seriously, Google that. Seriously, go to YouTube, type in Tyson Fury punching himself. You will see a vi video of him failing to do a simple hook. Misses and hits himself in the face. Anyway. Everyone keeps asking me for my take on the... Um, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight. And from the clips that I've seen of both of them training... Jake Paul does not know what he's getting into. You do not know what you're getting into. There's a reason why you're fighting fighters who are no longer active professional fighters. There's no disrespect to you, Iron Mike. Please. I love you. Okay? The, the day I realized you were somebody was when you fucking eviscerated. I mean, eviscerated. Okay. I can even remember that 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 jumping right that you did and you smacked him right in the nose and he just went down. Long story short. And then you did then you fought Frank Bruno and just eviscerated him. And that's when I knew for a fact, right there, right then, that American boxing styles differ widely than European and there's a reason why. European boxers like Frank Bruno, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, um, um, Anthony Joshua, they're all stagnant. They're flat-footed. They don't move. They don't move. Do you see? Take a look at boxers like Ali and even Tyson. Mike's standing there. He's throwing combinations, but he's moving. Do you see? He's moving. You don't see that with British boxers. British boxers just stand and go like they're rock'em sock'em robots. It's boring. It's boring. It's fucking boring. I can't stand to see a Joshua fight. I can't stand to see a Fury fight. I can't stand to see a Joan Joyce fight. I can't stand to see any British boxer. I just can't. You are boring as fuck. You just stand there like a moron. You don't move you don't slip a shoulder you don't fucking duck you don't you, you don't do nothing you just stand there like a muppet this is why tyson rolled over every fucking wbo champion in his prime is because even bruno just stood there when are you gonna fucking learn jake paul does the exact same thing I've seen his training videos where he's working on a couple of heavy bags and stuff like that. What's he doing? <laughs> it's not, you're not it man, okay? This isn't Chinese Kung Fu, right? Stop doing the whole, right? It's not Chinese Kung Fu, okay? You can stand there and throw a thousand fucking punches and gash yourself out by the second round, okay? Tyson's going to take you in three hits. Three hits. It's going to be a straight that you're not going to see coming. He's going to duck. And he's either going to go for the body, or he's going to come up. Or better yet, it'll be a straight you don't see coming, body. And it'll be a straight, dead, straight up uppercut, and you will not see it. Your jaw will get fucking hairline fractured. Ask Frank Bruno. Your jaw will get a hairline fracture. Why? Because you're too stationary. Too fucking stationary. You will get hurt. Move. Learn. To move, okay? I'm sorry, but Kronk's gym has gone down in its training ever since Emmanuel Stewart passed away. Kronk's gym used to mean something. Used to. Not anymore. There is the Mayweather gym. It's never meant anything. All of Mayweather's fighters, including Mayweather himself, just sit there and just... That's all they do. That's all he does. But still, he moves. So I will give him credit for that. He moves. He fucking moves. He always moves. 
So he's doing. So he's doing. He might as well just be a fucking dancer. He might as well be a backup dancer. All of Mayweather's fighters, the, any fighter from Mayweather's gym, might as well be a backup dancer for Beyonce. Oh, the single ladies. Oh, the single ladies. You, that's about as all you're good for. Seriously. You're too afraid to throw a fucking punch. What, you scared you might break an L? Ooh. Again, this is why when a skinny little fighter like Mayweather gets into a ring with a fighter that actually knows what the fuck they're doing, you tend to get hurt. That's my whole point. Paul, you're out of your fucking league. You're out of your fucking league. This is just going to be... If Tyson treats this differently from his last fight, which was an exhibition that he did against one of my favorites, against Paul... Uh, against against Jones Jr., if he treats it different than, than the junior fight and actually treats you like an actual fucking opponent and realizes this isn't an exhibition, that I'm not supposed to be kitty gloves kind of thing and actually fucking lets the, lets the monster loose in him again, you will be lucky if you would even be able to fucking talk right ever again. Think about this for a second. Tyson in his prime used to have a 1,068 pound per square inch punch force do you understand how strong that is a hydraulic nail gun you know one of the ones you put the air compressor and go that is set at 900 pounds per square inch mike tyson could physically punch a nail through anything in his prime i can guarantee you from the way he looks, he still works out, still does weights, and he's probably close, closer now to about just a hair under a thousand pounds per square inch. But I'm telling you right now, if Tyson gets a clean fucking shot on your little piss weak jaw, <laughs> you'll literally be a real life Rocky. You'll be talking out the side of your face. <laughs> For the rest of your fucking life. You will literally be able to step in to the shoes of Sylvester Stallone when he passes. <laughs> literally, that, you, you will literally be a living vegetable. Do you understand that? He will punch you so hard your brain will still be fucking rattling around inside your head like a fucking ball bearing inside a fucking paint can. <laughs> You'll be fucked. That's if Tyson does truly let himself off the chain. You're fucking with the devil, boy, and you're gonna get fucking burnt. And I'm saying that for a fact. From both as an ex-pseudo ex wanted to be pro boxer, to even a, not just a fan of boxing, okay? I'm talking Jack Dempsey. I'm talking proper boxers. Back then, that would go way over 12 rounds. 16, 18, 20, 24 rounds, and still going. Where the ring was... Was why it's now pink from the amount of blood that both boxers are losing and the fight still weren't called off through blood loss. Like it is today because they're a bunch of pussies. I got a little cut. I can't fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm looking at you, Fury. Anyway, long story short. Jake Paul, prepare to get your fucking ass beat end of fighting has been MMA MMA guys don't mean nothing fighting low ranked not even in the fucking top 100 barely qualified for their boxing license fighters don't mean nothing going to a class that is legendary from class D good luck trying to beat a Ferrari in a Ford Fiesta. Okay? Because that's what you are. You are down here. He is up here. Learn to respect the art. Learn to respect the fighter. Learn to respect the art. It's that simple. This isn't just some sort of bullshit scam payday for you and your brother. Like your prime energy drink.
Your brother should stick to wrestling because he's the biggest fucking fraud. You should then go to wrestling as well and be a tag team. Because you're both as fucking frauds of each other. Anyway, guys, that's my take on that crap. <sighs> I think I look good for 44. Anyway, guys, uh, I will be back from my vacation. Uh, well, it's, really, it's more of a family getaway kind of thing. I'll be back uh, Monday. Uh, Monday afternoon, so about 3 or 4 o'clock, I will probably go in live and uh, we can discuss the Mike Tyson Jake Paul shit more live then, in fact I'm going to be doing a coffee time with Cobra uh, live, so uh, yeah, until then guys keep your shows fun, keep your enemies dying Capricorn Commander is out see you guys in the next one